we've travelled across to Lavenham to come and see Legacy Vehicles. We want to see if this is the sort of thing that we can do. We know nothing at all about running a traction engine other than watching YouTube videos. So this was a chance to come over, see Tom, and get an engine fired up and find out what it's like. Morning, Tom. Good morning. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'm Tom from Legacy Vehicles. We're a dealer and repairer of uh, well, all classic vehicles, but mainly miniature steam engines and full-size steam traction engines as well. Is most of our business. So you've got quite a quite a workshop here, quite a number it's of quite vehicles. A selection, yeah. I mean, it's nothing salubrious, but we certainly do quite a lot of decent work here. Um, the workshop's actually full of various projects and things on the go for customers, and also our own engines, which we're doing up and restoring or making making suitable for customers, so they're nice and safe to use. So, what's the engine that we're going to be firing today? So today we're firing up a six-inch little Samson. Uh, it's based on a five ton tractor, so it's a relatively small six inch engine. Some of them come out much, much larger. This comes out a really nice size engine. It's about a ton in weight. Um, two people can comfortably sit on the back of it. Nice, nice size. This one was built in 2015. Um, we actually had the engine in last year as well, where we had a full uh, 10 year inspection for it, um, where we took all the boiler tins off to get underneath. So we've had a full thorough inspection by independent boiler inspectors. Um, it's had another inspection as well this year, and now we're sort of selling it on behalf of the owner again and doing the training days with it as well. Okay, right. so um, we're going to start uh, start getting this uh, steamed up. So what, what what are the processes we need to do first? Yeah, so the first job we did this morning, uh, we, we dropped down the ash pan, which is this part down here. Removed the pins, dropped the ash pan down, and one that that gave us access to is then all the fire grate and the fire bars. Um, and what we did is emptied all the ash out from the previous steaming. Uh, we do that to make sure it's all nice and clean, allows the airflow to come through, and also we checked the grate to make sure it was in decent condition because sometimes they crack and get damaged. Um, the assembly then went straight back up, slid the pins in. Um, we connect the damper rod back up as well, which is what controls your airflow into your fire. So see it's closed and open and we use that to control the fire when we're steaming which we'll see later. Um, the other job as well we do is we sweep the tubes. So the tubes can be found behind the smoke box door. This works on a simple mechanism. We've got the inner one which turns the latch and then the outer one which locks it. You see in here we've got a series of tubes. There's a tube brush which is supplied the right size. Uh, you slide the tube brush down a couple of times and what that means is it just keeps all the clear nice and soot, clear of all the soot, which means the heat transfer is very efficient. It's one of those jobs which um, you can do it any time really. We normally do it just before our next steaming or what you can do is if it's gone cold the day before or gone cold and the day you're using it, you can do all these sort of jobs before you come to it as well. So we've got that cleaned out now. We've got the, um, the ash pan clean. We've got the fire grate we know is clean in there. So, uh, what's next then? So, next thing to do is make sure we've got enough water in the boiler. Yep. And the way we can check that is via the gauge glass, which is on the back here. So this tells us the water level within the boiler. Um, quite a common misconception that people do is they assume that half the gauge glass is where you need to be. Every engine is slightly different. Um, reason being is the fittings come out in different places so what you might find on some engines is half a glass is actually the top of the fire is actually the top of the boiler so it'll be too full or possibly on some engines where the bottom fitting is too low half a glass will actually mean you're not even covering the crown of the firebox so what we do you see here there's a couple of red marks on there and that is actually telling us where the, the firebox the top of the firebox is and where the actual top of the boiler is or where our working range of where we want to be um, what we've done we filled this one up with water, she's about, on this one half a glass is actually about right, but we can see the water's up to there. And the way we filled it is there's various fittings that you can go in by. Uh, we actually went via the fitting on the side of the boiler. We simply took this pipe off, put an adapter on, garden hose on it, and just filled it through this clack valve. And once it was finished, just took it all off and reassembled it. And because that's the uh, the point that you the, the the engine normally fills the boiler anyway, then it's a nice efficient way of getting the water that's out. That's it. Yep. So that's it. And you don't have to worry about because it's got a valve in there as well, a non-return valve. It's not like if you filled it up through one of the bottom fittings, you're then having to put a bung in at the same time as the water coming out. Um, as soon as you just take that fitting off, the clack valve will shut, and then it gives you the time to put the pipe and everything back onto it. So I guess the uh, the next step is what land a fire. Putting a fire in it. Yeah. Yep. So we'll get some coal. We'll get some wood and go from there. Okay, so the next bit, the fun bit, is actually putting a fire in. So we'll put an extension chimney 
on, which will help the help the engine raise steam a bit quicker. Um, it just allows the fire to draw. Um, on this size engine, you can get away without using one because uh, it's got a longer chimney than sort of thing uh, than sort of a smaller four inch engine. Um, but it's worth having because it often helps in the morning and gets you that that little bit quicker. And you don't bother with any other blowers or not on this size. So you'd probably uh, for about three inch engine, we'd use a blower. Um, we sometimes use it on a four inch engine if we're in a bit of a rush or um, we've got a particularly cold day and just to get the fire started. But normally speaking, on this sort of size engine, you shouldn't really need one. Um, the only time you might do is a particularly still day, but then there's other tricks to deal with that. Um, if you have a really still day and the fire just doesn't want to work, um, the quickest and easiest trick on this size engine is actually get a rag soaked in paraffin, open up your fire box, your smoke box door, set fire to that, close your smoke box door, and what that'll do is heat up all the chimney in the smoke box, which will then cause that. Transfer so, so just like a, a regular open fire at home, it won't draw properly until you've got some heat in the chimney. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly that. So yeah. putting the sort of oily, the, the paraffin soaked rag will just warm that assembly all up, and then that will mean it will draw the fire through. Um, before we light the fire as well, first thing we need to make sure is we've got the ash pan open. Again, so it's got oxygen, so won't oxygen burn without oxygen. Underneath. Yeah. That's it. Um, and again, before you do anything, always just make sure you've got plenty of water in the boiler. That's the point thing. Yep, so we filled the boiler up, we can see that on the gauge. It's about halfway up there on the gauge. That's it. And so we've just got some regular kindling there. This is kindling. Uh, you can make your own from pallets if you wanted to. I'll just buy it and buy the bulk load because I don't want to be sitting there chopping it up for hours on end. Um, standard paraffin, just normal paraffin that you can get, or heating oil or diesel, anything like, obviously not petrol. <laughs> well, <laughs> in, not case you want, explode, exactly, yeah. in case you want it to go bang. But yeah, any sort of like diesel or paraffin, something like that. Um, what we do is just flush it all on. First of all, we lay a little fire in there. Got seven or eight bits. And then you can, if you want, use uh, a rag soaked in paraffin or fire lighters. Different people like doing different things, but this generally works. As soon as they're in, fortunately the paraffin catches really quickly. A few more bits on top. And then we're just looking to uh, to get a decent bed of fire before we put coal on it. That's it. And then what we'll probably then what we'll do is we'll probably what I normally do with them is generally I'll have a wood fire um, up to about 30, 40 psi, um, maybe a little bit more. Uh, predominantly because the Welsh steam coal that we have been using, which unfortunately has actually stopped being available, uh, needs quite a heavy draw. So what we also do as well before, once we get the fire, is we open up the blower valve on the front here. What that does is take steam straight from the boiler, puts it through this pipe and out through the chimney. And what that does is allows the fire to draw, so it causes more draw to the fire. So as soon as it's got steam, then again, it's putting that, that warmth into the chimney. And pulling it, it straight it'll, through. Because of course the hot air is going to rise, it's going to yeah. draw through the boiler, so it's going to help raise yeah, pressure so, steam. So the way this one works is actually through, um, by putting the steam up the thing, rather than the heat, what it actually does is causes uh, a draw with a venturi effect, and so sucks. So by pulling the steam up there, you're actually sucking the air through. And so it's the air that gets dragged through quickly, which causes the fire to burn faster. Like if you've seen like an old forge where you put a put the air onto it when they pump it and the bellows go in and it gets brighter and brighter it's the same idea with this with the engine so and then what we'll do just leave that valve open um, we'll come back to it a bit later um, but when the steam starts raising what you do is just slowly slow that down because you don't want to roar in roaring fire uh, but we'll show you that in a bit so we've um so we've got uh, got some pressure up on the boiler then the fire's got going nicely what's uh what are we doing next? So yeah, what we've done with the fire as well, we've moved from wood onto uh, from wood onto coal now as well. So we've now got a nice bed of coal in there. Bloody noisy helicopters. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a nice bed of coal in. It's a little bit quiet, man, because we shut the damper because we were up to full pressure now. And what you'll see as well is the water's actually expanded quite a lot. So when we started, we had about half a glass, and it's actually it's expanded up to about the top here. So the boiler is pretty full at the moment. So we don't need to put any more water in. Um, what we did as well, we went around and lubricated the engine. So on this one, the crankshaft itself and all the clothes bearings have got grease on it. A lot of them have oil. Um, six, one, half dozen of the other, different people for different things. Uh, on the front works, it's all on oil as well because it's an open system rather than closed bearings. And importantly as well, we topped up the mechanical lubricator. This mechanical lubricator forces steam oil through the tube and into the cylinder block. 
this works, it's a different sort of oil from the reason on your bearings, because what actually happens is as it gets pumped in, it gets atomized in the steam. So you need to have a special sort of steam oil um, compared to the bearing oil. There is a new well, product that's been out for a while now, which is by Murray, it's called the Universal Golden Oil. And it's uh, universal if you're doing bearings and for steam, which we supply with a lot of the miniatures that we sell. Um, we've had no problems with it, works very well for everything. And it's nice that you just have one oil can to do everything. What we've also done as well while we're waiting, filling up the back tank with water. So how much water will go into that back tank? That one's about 40 litres, yeah, 40, 50 litres around that. Um, so we fill the back tank up with water, just get ourselves all prepared for today. Um, and for running the engine as well, when we steam up, we leave this valve open. So these valves on the front here, that's why we're talking. Um, these valves on the front, they allow water out of the cylinder block. So if there's any water or condensation in there, opening these valves will allow them out. You can see there's a little bit of steam trickling out. And when we first run the engine as well, we leave these open. They, uh, just come and say hello. <laughs> And so that's just the uh, safety valve releasing that's it, extra safety pressure. pressure. So we're up to pressure now. The safety valves are just fettering. We're probably so just slightly working under. Working pressure is what? I uh, mean, we're now just over what, on, uh, just over 120. Yep. So they'll start fettering. This one, it, the, the valves will fully lift at about 140, 150 psi. So it's not uncommon for them to start fettling at about 10, 15 psi lower than that. Fettling. That's the yeah. uh, the, the name for it. <laughs> yeah. So they. Um, but yeah, because they're just a spring assembly that hold it down, it doesn't take it's just a little bit just to open them up. And what will happen, obviously, the more the pressure increases, the more that will lift the ball off the seat, so they'll go off with more of it. And it's it's just the the variance in the spring pressure that that, that uh, so it's it's the 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 tension in the steel that dictates this the, the pressure release. That's it. So what level. you've got in there is basically just a ball against the seat, yeah. and a spring which is held against it. And so these ones are threaded, so you can actually adjust them slightly. Okay. So yeah. if you you know maybe if the spring's getting a bit older, or if you put new springs in you can use those to do the final adjustments so the more compressed it is the the uh the higher the pressure, the higher the pressure it will it will release that that's it yeah so. so for running the engine we've opened up the cylinder drain so the first time we're going to run the engine we've got your re your reverser which controls the valve gear which makes the engine go forwards and backwards and it also controls the amount of time that the valve is open for um you can look up a video for that rather than try and explain it <laughs> but what we generally do Pull forward. You've got your regulator, which opens up your steam from your from the boiler into the cylinder block. Just gently open it up. And she just what's happened there? She's at the dead centre. So all we do: open hand. Don't grab hold of the flywheel because it's, it'll flick over and take your hand. Nice open hand. Just flick it, and it'll put it over that dead centre point. Have the engine ticking over nicely. And, and because we, neither of the gears are engaged, the gears aren't it's not going to go yet. anywhere, so this is just nice tick over. That's it. And it's always worth doing this as well before you go off anywhere, before you drive off. It clears all the cylinder out, it gets the cylinder nice and hot, and it also gives you a chance to have a check over the engine, make sure everything's okay. And presumably then as well, it just makes sure, having greased all of this, that you've got grease everywhere it before it putting it under pressure. So what we find with this engine in particular is because it is on grease, um, like it's got a little bit of a squeak on the pump on here, what will happen is as the grease warms up and the engine actually settles into it because the grease warms up and becomes more of a lubricant. And then once we've run those for a little while, we shut the drain cocks. And there she goes. The way she goes. So you've got the cam here, and yep. so here or from the cam, that's what's driving the um, the water pump. The water pump. Yep. So we've got the two, so the three eccentrics, the two that control the valve gear at the front, and then we've got this one here, which then controls the pumps the water pump, which is an oscillator, an oscillator into a standard piston ram pump. Um, the pump itself for pumping water. The pump is a constant circulating system, so the water is constantly getting pumped up, it's getting sucked up through here, and then getting pumped up, pumped back down through the return to the thing. What we do, what we actually do is when we turn the pump on, in effect, what we're doing is shutting this valve, which is the water going down back into the return tank. And what it does is because it can't go through there, it comes out through here, down this pipe, and into the boiler. So what we'll do, just gently ease that in, and you'll hear the pump pumping away. And what you'll also find as well, because you're then pumping against boiler pressure, the engine itself will slow down. And what we suggest with these as well, because what you're doing is basically shutting off that water supply, as you bring these in, 
do it nice and slowly. Don't just whack them open. The reason being is what you can do is shock the whole system. It's like putting just a, like a metal stopper on the end of it, and it doesn't allow the whole system for pumping the water into the thing to open up quick enough. You can, not so much on this size engine, but certainly on some of the smaller ones, um, you can damage the system or slip the eccentric because they're normally just keyed on. Um, there's lots of different things. So everything on the engine, just be nice and gentle. There's no reason to whack mechanical off. sympathy. Exactly. And what we'll do, and at this speed as well, it's all right to shut this one off. The pump on this is particularly big. So what we suggest is when you're actually running at road speeds or ticking over faster, is just leave that cracked open slightly and that allows a little bit to go back into the tank and quite a lot still to go into the boiler. Yeah. And it just means you're not trying to push the whole volume of water down that pipe. Right? And so the continuous the, the continuous circulation is because there, there's no clutch on the pump or anything like that. Nope, so sorry. the pump is constantly going exactly. from the from the cam. Yep. Um, Sometimes, a um, little trick for the pumps as well, especially if they've been left for a while, sometimes what can happen, because they're just ball valves in there, is they can sit on the seat. So the seat just gets stuck slightly. And what happens when you first start pumping, it doesn't have enough, there might be a little bit of air in there, it doesn't have enough to lift the balls off the seat once the water's through. So what often is a little trick is if it's not pumping, get a handle of a screwdriver, dunk it on the top of the thing, and what they'll do, that'll dislodge the, the balls enough, and then what you'll probably find is your pump will start pumping away. Um, also, if you've left your pump for quite a while, what can happen is the water can drain back into the tank and you need to prime your pump. This one has got a little cheat on it because you've actually got a little priming valve on there, but what we can do, when you're priming a pump, all you want to do, leave all your valves open, what you might want to do is crack that open so there's no back pressure. Have the engine very gently ticking over. For priming a pump, you want it to go nice and slowly. Going fast doesn't help. Nice and slowly, what will happen eventually, water will squirt out of here. Um, through this fitting and as soon as it does that you mean you've primed your pump nip that back up and then your pump should be working fine 90% of pump problems are either the balls have got stuck or that it's just lost prime it's a very simple fix so and what we've also been doing as well is controlling the fire via the ash pan yep so we showed this earlier where we had the damper which we had open where we've got up to full pressure we actually shut this and what that does is just stop the airflow into the bottom of the fire and kills the fire right down. So you know, same as you would on a on a uh, multi-fuel stove at home. Exactly. You know, the same. open the bottom, open the top, just to regulate the fire. That's it. Exactly yeah. that. And so, when the pressure drops a little bit, we'll open it back up again. Um, and yeah, so now the engine's got a nice, sort of good head of steam on it. The fire. So you'll sit there quite happily now for quite a while. While if you wanted to go and have your bacon sandwiches or do whatever you wanted yeah. to, or it's ready to start driving around and enjoying. We've left the extension chimney on purely because of the fact it keeps the smoke out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than sitting us gas, gas around it. But you can take that off. As soon as your blower starts starts drawing, you can take that smoke off. I'd originally intended this vlog to cover all of the experiences with legacy vehicles, but actually, as it's getting quite long, I've split this into two halves. First half you've just seen, and the second half will then be about learning to drive the engine and actually taking it out on the road. See you then.